we've got uh, Betty Lemke, uh, who is an artist from Elbow, Saskatchewan. Uh, Betty Lemke is, has a master's degree in science, if you can believe that. Um, <laughs> she's a nutri nutritionalist, I suppose. So. Um, so her work comes from a very scientific background. In fact, the way that she speaks about it is very scientific too. She talks about surface texture and uh, uh, mixed media gels and, and that she adds to the paint to make it move in certain ways. The work is quite a bit different from um, what we've traditionally shown in the past in that it's, it's slightly abstract and abstract is that uh, very special word that not a lot of people like to hear about. Uh, representational is another one, or landscape, portrait, or that sort of stuff. But um, I mean, the work was influenced by images of the Hubble telescope, and they do have that sort of space-like uh, theme to them. Um, so in fact, they are actually representational. It's just that the image is, uh, leans itself to abstraction. So it, it's certainly challenged people a lot uh, over the course of the month. And um, uh, you have some people who, who just look at it for its visual elements in terms of the, the very bright colors that, that you can see. Um, and then you've got other people who are trying to look for something that they can recognize. And all sorts of things uh, come out from people's imaginations. But people see anything from dragons to, uh, to arteries to space uh, objects and nebula and galaxies and whatnot. So it's, um, it's certainly challenged people a lot in, in their conceptions of what traditional art is and what contemporary art is. And well, I've According to my older sister, I started drawing when I was a kid, but uh, I don't remember an awful lot about that. But as I got older, I got interested. They didn't have the art classes in school like they have now, but um, when we were first married, I took a lot of classes in Saskatoon. I took some from uh, Louise Walters at the Mendel Gallery, a whole bunch of things. And then I started getting frustrated because we had uh, four little kids running around and ended up with five and I had read somewhere that if you were going to be an artist like uh, the one fellow says you got to make you know do 5,000 things before you even start but the one that got me was that you have to put your art ahead of everything else in your life and so I thought okay I'll, uh, I'll put it aside until I can make it a priority. And so I, I did some drawing and sketching through the years. And I always said, you know, when I retire, this is what I'm going to do. As soon as I retired, I started looking for classes and whoa, the teaching of art had come a long way. I started taking some uh, classes from Cecilia Jurgens, and she is amazing. And over the 10 years that she taught watercolor, it was a once a month class. And she went through all the concepts, all the, uh, all the theory, all the color theory, all those things. I started doing some watercolor portraits and then I did some in colored pencil and then uh, got into acrylic portraits and uh, really liked that. And then um, discovered that acrylic is just really a lot of fun. It's the consistency is everything when you're pouring paint. And the style of uh, painting that I'm doing is considered, is, is poured acrylics. Started with uh, a class with Giselle Bosch in Saskatoon, and she does a lot of uh, big, very spiritually oriented paintings. And I was quite fascinated with what she did. But one afternoon, as part of her uh, classes of spirituality and art, which had a lot of meditation and things involved with them, but we poured these paintings. And uh, I'm, I guess I'm an extrovert because I didn't know whether I liked it or not till I came home and one of my fellow artists said, uh, whoa, I like that, uh, finish it, and, uh, and I want it for my home. And then was the big challenge. It's one thing to pour the paint, but when she said finish it, I had to, okay, how can I bring this from, you know, what any kindergarten kid could do and bring it up into a painting. And so then I went, you know, started thinking about applying all the concepts that I had learned over the years about what makes a good painting and tried applying it. And uh, it just opened up a whole new way of a new excitement, so within a couple of years I had painted uh, 20 of the big abstracts, enough for a show.
Spirit of the Universe series is, um, we're all inspired by photographs from the Hubble Telescope. There's several books and they're on websites and different things like that. And um, the idea was I would look at something and think, oh, if you could only capture that magnificence. And then I'd go and I'd maybe take a couple of primary colors or a basic pattern or something and pour it onto the canvas. But then after you've done the initial pour, you have to leave it 24 hours because I use a lot of water in with it and, and, and medium so it would stick. And uh, you come back the next day and what you've got doesn't look anything like what the original image was. And that's when I really became an abstract artist because I thought, okay, what is this painting telling me? and what can I do with this? And then I had to start, and, and that is a real challenge for me, to say, okay, you know, is it balanced? Is, um, you know, is it moving? I find that uh, that series, um, I've called them all Odyssey, Odyssey 1, to, I'm up to about 24 now, and I didn't want to make, some of them say, oh, that one looks like a dog, this one looks like this and that, I didn't want any images into the head of the people who are looking at the paintings so that they're free to go with it wherever it wants. And once you do the undercoat, you do the pour, and then you decide uh, how to interact with the picture and that's where listening to what it's telling you and, and trying to work with it. And it's really exciting because then what I come up with is just as much a surprise to me as it is to anybody else. Griffith has kind of challenged me to see if I can make you comfortable with abstract art. And so I told them how the first time I poured a painting, I thought I was doing something traditional or what used to be called representational and found out I wasn't and had to take that next step and just work with the color and the canvas the way it was. Well, I don't know if I should say this or not, but I'm 70 years old. I figure I've got a good 20 years left <laughs> to pay. And then it might be a little downhill after that, and that's as much time as most people spend in their career these days. So um, I've just really been inspired by the reception there and by the mentorship of the curator that I got, and I will continue to keep in contact with him because he's been so helpful, and he has a mainland work too, and, uh, and paint. Yeah.